Hello, this is Josh Patel back again with another biology video. Today we're going to be doing chapter 33, which is protection, support, and movement. And so we're going to start with 33.1, which is skeletal, the skeletal system. So the skeletal system includes bones and tissues that are important for supporting, protecting, and moving the body. Your skeletal system is made up of the appendicular and axial skeletons. So the skeletal system protects, supports, and moves the body. Those are its functions. The appendicular skeleton includes legs, arms, feet, and hands. Allows for movement, includes bones called girdles that connect the limbs to, to the body. So the axial skeleton includes the skull, rib cage, and spinal column, or the axial skeleton I meant. Supports body and protects tissues. Allows for limited movement. The vertebrae is the bone of the spinal column that protects your spinal cord. So here you have the skull, the ribs, the breastbone, and the vertebrae. Cartilage is connective tissue between bones. So cartilage is between two bones, so it cushions bones, allows for smooth movement, and it connects the bones. And then bones connect to form joints. Joints are places where two bones meet. And there are three types of joints. There is a fibrous, which does not allow for movement. So this fibrous joint in your skeleton or your brain, your head, your skull, I meant. It just connects these two pieces, but it, you can't move. And there's a cartilaginous joint, which allows partial movement. And there's a synovial joint, which allows for greater movement. So there are several types of synovial joints. There's a gliding joint, a pivot joint, a ball and socket joint, and a saddle joint, and a hinge joint. So gliding pivotal, ball and socket, saddle hinge. So ligaments are long bands of tissues that connect bones across a joint. So ligament, long bands, tissues connect bones and like where a joint is. So it's kind of called like cartilage, but it's where a joint is. So as we recall, cartilage joins bone to bone and ligament is like long band of tissue. So it's kind of like muscle, but it connects across a joint. So bones are living tissue. Bone is made of compact bone tissue and spongy bone tissue. So compact bone tissue is what makes it hard and makes spongy on the inside. Compact bone is hard and dense, so osteosis bone cells maintain compact bone rings. So Haversen canals allow blood vessels in the bone. So these little holes inside the bone. Spongy bone protects red or yellow bone marrow. Red bone marrow produces blood cells, and yellow bone marrow is mostly fat. So, calcification is the process of building hard bone. It combines collagen and calcium phosphate. Transforms cartilage into hard bone during childhood. And to speed up this process, usually kids drink a lot of milk, and so milk provides calcium for your bones to strengthen. So 33.2 muscular systems. So mus muscles are tissues that can contract, enabling movement. Humans have three types of muscles. The muscular system moves substances through the body. Bones of the skeletal system, food th through the digestive system, and blood through the circulatory system. And fluids through the excretory system. So those are what the muscles help move. There are three types of muscle tissues. There is a skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle attaches to skeleton by tendons. So tendons attach muscle to, to bones. Okay, muscle to bones. Skeletal muscles are mostly voluntary. So when it says voluntary, that means you're able to use it voluntarily. So you get to choose when to bend your arm or when to clench your fist. Smooth muscle lines organs and is involuntary, so it doesn't really, you can't control what your organs do. Your heart's never going to stop beating, your kidney's not going to just 
stop. You can't control your kidney. It's involuntary. So smooth muscle surrounds organs. Moves food through the digestive organs. Empty liquids from the bladder. Control width of blood vessels. So, and then we have cardiac muscle, which is found only in the heart. It pumps blood through the body. Controlled by pacemaker. Contains more mitochondria than skeletal muscle cells. So mitochondria, as we know, produces ATP, which is energy. So cardiac muscles must need a lot of energy. Muscles contract when the nervous system causes muscle filament to move. Muscle fibers are called are cells of the muscular system. So mitofibrils are long strands of protein in the muscle fiber. Okay, and this isn't that important to know. Each myofibril is divided into sarcomers. So sarcomers contain filament that cause contraction. So it helps basically help move. So axin filaments are pulled during contraction. Myosin filament pull action during contraction. And this again, don't need to know. Neuron stimulates muscles at the neuros neuromuscular joint junction. So neurotransmitters cause calcium channels in the sarcomer to open. Calcium exposes binding sites. And myosin binds to actin and pulls it. And yet again, this you don't need to know this. So it's okay if you don't. As the sarcomer shortens, the muscle contracts. Okay, so 33.3, .3, which is integumetry system. So the integumetry system has many tissues that protect the body. So the integumentary system helps maintain homeostasis. The integumentary is the body system that surrounds all your other organ systems and prevents infection. So the integumentary system consists of many parts, the skin, hair, nails, oil glands, and sweat glands, proteins such as the, um, keratin. So this is basically your outside body, so the skin and your hair, which basically physically protect you from infections. So integumentary system removes substances from your body, so it removes water, salts, urea, so basically from your pores, it releases sweat to release other substances like salt. So the integumentary system consists of many different tissues. The outermost or upper layer of the skin is the epidermis. So this is dead skin cells, oils, and it has pores. So the very top layer is the epidermis. Cells in the epidermis produce Keratin and melanin. Keratin makes cells waterproof and tough feeling. Melanin is a dark pigment that absorbs UV rays, and this you don't have to know. The dermis contains most of the tissue in the skin, this you do have to know. So it has sweat glands, oil glands, pressure receptors, blood vessels, and hair follicles. So the dermis is the other, like one of the thicker parts, which include all of this. So it's right under the epidermis. So hair follicle is an elongated pit of the cell that produces a hair, produces keratin that forms hair glands, sweat glands, oil glands, glands which they release sweat and oil from the body. They have three types. The dermis also produces elastin and collagen. So, elastin makes skin flexible, and collagen gives skin its shape. So, beneath the dermis is a two, or, I mean, is a flat layer. I meant, it's a fat layer, so underneath here we have a bunch of fat, and then we have the veins and arteries going through. So, that's, so we have the epidermis, the dermis, and then a fat layer. So, that's the end of... Chapter 33, which is protection, support, and movement. We basically learned about the musculatory and the skeleton system. And also a little bit about skin. 
discuss the end of chapter 33 and make sure to join us on the last chapter, chapter 34.